for tuning in. This is the third mini episode of The Book Table from Backroom Whispering Productions, and we're going to discuss National Novel Writing Month this time. My name is Dorothy McQuaid, and I'm a new voice that you haven't heard before on Book Table Discussions, and I'm here with Shelley. Yeah, just to introduce myself, um, I'm Shelley. I am a grad student living in Atlanta right now, and I've done NaNoWriMo a few years before, but I haven't ever won. And surprise, I didn't again. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the last time I won was in high school or maybe my freshman or sophomore year of college, um, which was about five years ago now. Uh, But I think I had a lot less going on in my life at that time. So shockingly, I didn't win this year either. So for this podcast, we're just going to discuss what made us want to do NaNoWriMo and how it worked and how we feel about it and what we created, even though we didn't quite hit that 50,000 word goal. Yeah, much less in my case, but it's it's still fun doing it every time. So what made you decide to do it this year, even knowing that you had a lot going on in your life? Um, Yeah, this is my last semester of grad school right now, so it was kind of a bad decision to try and do it. But it just happens like every November, I kind of get caught up in everyone's enthusiasm. And I'm like, oh, writing, that's awesome. Let's all write. And yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah, I just... Everyone was so excited. Everyone got super... Almost everyone here at Backroom Whispering did NaNoWriMo this year, whether they did it with the goal of 50,000 or whether they did it just sort of knowing that they weren't going to complete. Um, a lot of people participated and a lot of people got very excited, and that's what swept me up, too. I actually had said that I was not going to do it because I knew my internship was ending, I was going to be moving, I was going to be looking for a job... I was going to be without internet for a while, and I knew that it wasn't going to happen all the way, but all this excitement and enthusiasm and these stories that have been percolating in my head for the longest time made me join. Yeah, yeah, same here. Like, I had no intention of doing it, and then on, I think, November 2nd or something, I was just like, oh, well, I have a little free time. I'm just going to start writing. Yeah, mine was November 3rd. So what was, uh, what was your story this year? Was it something you'd been thinking you you thought of it for a while and just decided to make it um, happen? It was actually something. Um, so once in a while, my fiance will just throw me like little plot bunnies <laughs> and be like, "You should write this," and I'm like, "Okay, I'll I'll file that away for when I have some time." Um, so he had suggested a sort of like um, modern Scarlet Pimpernel, who's um, like I guess the Scarlet Pimpernel was like a super foppish guy, and so. He wanted to make that modern by making it a super like flamboyantly gay guy, sort of like um, I think of Titus Burgess in uh or whatever his name was in the show in Kimmy Schmidt, mm-hmm. um, a good example. Oh yeah. So very yeah, very I sort of wanted to, Yes, I sort of wanted to run with that. So um, the thing I started was a sort of um, what's the word? Like an a sort of an urban fantasy. Um, the main character is like an undercover um, agent investigating paranormal things. And um, in his daily life, he is a life coach. So, (laughs) yeah. I didn't really have time to flesh it out that much. I really didn't get that far into it, but it's still something I'd like to continue, definitely. Yeah, that sounds super neat. I think that's uh, that might be the dividing line between the people who com- who finished and the people who didn't. I didn't really have an outline either. Like, I had a general like, characters and a general setting, but as far as plot, not so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really had no idea where the plot was going to go. So, and that can be rough. Of... If like if you have an outline, you can sort of say, okay, if I'm stuck here, I guess I'll go write something else that I know is going to happen. But if you don't, it's like, uh. Mm-hmm. There were a couple times where I got little like um, little inspirations and did little random scenes um, that were not in the beginning or whatever, just randomly scattered throughout the the novel. That's not really a novel yet, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I didn't really have an idea of where it was going like in, overall. So were you able to carve time out every day or just one chunk a week, or did you have any sort of schedule like that? Um. Not really. Like I did, uh, I think I mostly wrote the first week of the month and then I kind of 
got sucked into schoolwork and you know all that (laughs) but um yeah so that first week I guess I wrote like in between classes I sometimes have like awkward like hour and a half um blocks or like some of my classes I don't have to take notes or anything so um like the one I'm TAing I just go and I have to record it so I just sat there and you know wrote a little bit so it was kind of nice like having something to do that wasn't being on Facebook or yeah all that I I actually cranked out my first 3,000 words in the backseat of a truck while my boss was driving around. So, wow, <laughs> that's, find time that's impressive. You... <laughs> yeah, I was on my phone. I completely killed my battery just typing in. I think it was in a blank email because I knew that Gmail would save it. But, uh, that <laughs> That's where my first 3,000 came from. I don't know if I'd be able to write on a phone. That sounds difficult. <laughs> it was, but even now, like exactly a month later, my phone still tries to autocomplete with things that would have been in the story. Okay, so my story was <laughs> um, basically teenagers growing up in suburbia, and uh, I, I blatantly stole a few little plot elements, a few little character details from some of my friends. And I had one of them go to a religious school, and it was like, the, the school is named St. Stephen's, but because they're, you know, obnoxious teenagers, she wants to call it, like, St. Stupid or St. Stick Up <laughs> or whatever. Um so now every time in my phone, when I type in Saint, it tries to fill out one of those things. It's like, <laughs> no, phone. That wasn't me. That was my 14-year-old character. <laughs> that was pretty funny. So would you pick up this novel again next November, or would you do something completely different and just work on this in your spare time? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, you can tell I'm not a planner, so I don't really know <laughs> what, what I'm going to be doing this time next year. Um, I mean, I'd like to keep working on it. I think I'll have a little more time in January since I'm going to be graduated and uh, so hashtag fun employed. <laughs> well, I'm, I'll be sort of employed. I just don't know how I'm getting paid yet. Well, that's kind of one <laughs> of the important parts of employment, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. But Ideally. Again, I, I did just do an unpaid internship for a year, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been told I'll be paid. I just, the logistics are super annoying mm-hmm. since... I might not be a student, but I could still be a student if it would help me get paid. So, yeah. Well, technically, so I I technically was a PhD student, and then I decided I didn't want to do that. So I never dropped it. And apparently you don't really drop it. You just don't register for classes. So I can just be a PhD student for, like, ever. (laughs) So what about you? Do you think you'll pick this up again? I, you know, actually I've wanted to write this story for a really long time, which is how Miss Rebecca got me. (laughs) <laughs> hey, weren't you meaning to write this? Um, and she she did. She got me. But uh, I've been meaning to write it for a long time, and I never carve out the time to sit down and write it. Even when I do have some free time, I'm working on a different project, working on stuff for backroom whispering, working on knitting stuff, or or I'm just too emotionally drained to write. So I think one of the things that NaNoWriMo is good for is kind of forcing you to write. If you are even a slightly competitive person or even slightly need like goals and deadlines and that kind of thing to work, which I I think I need goals. I need deadlines. I can't just, ah, oh, it'll happen someday. So NaNoWriMo is good for that. So I would probably, unless I magically sit down and finish this story, I got about 10,000 words, but I was still only halfway through her freshman year. So there's a lot more story to be told. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, NaNoWriMo really helps with the, oh, you have this specific word count goal every day. So it's something to work towards. And if you don't have some kind of deadline, for me at least, I just kind of, like, put things off. So. Yes, yes, that's exactly how yes. I am. And it really helps to have the community and just seeing people around you, um, you know, have post their word counts and see, oh, well, I need to beat my friend, so <laughs> I have to write more. Um, or, you know, reading the the uh, inspirational emails from, from oh, the NaNoWriMo man. people. Speaking of beating friends, man, big shout out to Aspen, who had about 10,000 the whole month, and then the very last day sat down, drank like five cups of coffee, oh and gosh. did it. Got up to 50,000. Like, hats off. That's awesome. Yeah, I can't believe that. I don't think I could ever do it. <laughs> I think I think I maybe got 10,000 words in a day once, like in in high school when I didn't have anything else to do and I just went to the library and just sat there. Um, 
But more than that, oh gosh, it would just be mush. It would just be like, she walked down the hall. She saw Jim and Jack and John <laughs> and Jane. Jane looked at her weird. Then she went to class. Like, I would not be able to write anything of quality after writing for that many hours. So mad props, mad respect. Yeah, I mean, at some point, I think that stuff is helpful. Like, when you go back, you can just make it better just but it you'll have all of the <laughs> outlining basically it's just like a really involved outline yeah really really involved outline but i was really happy with just in general what i did accomplish even though it wasn't oh i didn't win i didn't complete um but to have just the setting i fleshed it out i fleshed out a character list i gave these characters different attributes and like different backstories that i can draw from later it's definitely a step like you definitely got something to work from now it, yeah it's it's much better than those ideas that were just floating around in my head so i'm extremely glad that i did it and that rebecca convinced me to even though i didn't get very far at all it's still it, you know one small step Right. So do you plan to work on this like throughout the year or saving it for next November or anything like that? It's probably not going to happen throughout the year. Just in all honesty, I'm Yeah. yeah. I am not that self-disciplined. I have to be real. Like when I can't just go to the gym and work out. I have to go to a class or I have to have a goal or like a written thing. So to me, it's very yep. similar. It's the oh, I'm trying to finish this many words is very similar to I have to run this many miles or whatever. Not that I run miles or anything. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just, even though in NaNoWriMo there's no one breathing down your neck saying you need to write, and it's not like you need to write to keep the electricity on. It's like you said, the community is always encouraging and the, the self, you, you, you do discipline yourself. You say, hey, I got to sit down and do this, or I got to set my alarm half an hour earlier and wake up and do this. Mm -hmm. and, and it's good. It's better than just showing up to the gym like, what are all these machines? It's, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know what you're going to so. do. Yeah, because it's something we all have fun doing. So we just like to, you know, sit down and create something. So it's kind of, yeah, it's it's fun to get a time that's just for doing that. So if you could have done something different in the month of November this year, would you have or would you have done it exactly the same? Hmm. Well, I definitely could have, I definitely did have the time to continue writing a little bit longer than I did. Like I kind of just, I don't know what it was. Either I got caught up in other things like, you know, having a social life, <laughs> maybe, I about? guess. <laughs> I don't need that. But yeah, I, I could have probably carved out more time. Um, but I just, I don't know. I don't know what it was that just kept me from writing more, but um, yeah, I would have, I would have liked to have spent a little more time on it because I, my work count was pretty low at the end. Um, I really honestly didn't write for like the, the last three weeks of the month. Same. Well, well yeah. yeah, I mean, for the last three weeks of November, I was, uh, well, I had a recognition ceremony for my internship, which I had to like pl help out plan and help produce and all that. And then I was like sleeping in a bunk room with a whole bunch of people and then I was moving and, like, driving eight hours a day and packing all my stuff and unpacking all my stuff. But... Yeah, that's a lot. I guess if I was more self-disciplined... I mean, it's not like you need the internet to just sit and write. It it helps. For me, it's not a distraction. Mm -hmm. It's having that community um, is encouraging, not distracting. Um, right. I can't just, like, sit there and look at a text document and get it done. <laughs> <laughs> So today yeah. we've learned that I'm a very undisciplined person. <laughs> and me too. But we still had fun. No, I mean, we still... Yeah, no, that's definitely true. Like, 10,000 words is better than zero words. Um, for me, if I could do something differently, I would have planned it out. Like, I, before November 3rd, I would have at least had a sort of vague outline of like, okay, these are the major challenges she's going to encounter... These are, like, how she's going to get through it, how it's going to help her, how it's going to harm her. Um, just a, even, you know, a few sentences, like, ah, oh, sophomore year XYZ, senior year ABC, mm -hmm. um, would have given me a lot more structure. And then I wouldn't have had those bad days where it's like, I don't know what she's doing today, so I'm not going to write today. So I know you've, I know you've won in the past. Um, did you outline that year? Do you remember it all? Um... Honestly, I was I just had so much more energy. 
Like the the mm-hmm. two years that in a row that I won were my um sophomore and junior year of high school and or junior and senior. I don't know. I had a lot Something more energy that. in high school. Um <laughs> I had a lot less going on. I wasn't worried about um I don't know, health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wasn't, I wasn't worried about trying to find a job. I wasn't worried about, I, I don't know. I didn't have any huge meter, like nobody in my life died this month or anything like that. But it just seems to me looking back, I had a lot less going on and a lot more, um, emotional and mental and even physical energy to pump into it because I would sit, uh, outside my room, like at five in the morning typing, just, mm-hmm. okay, time to type, let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely, like, I remember when I did this in high school, I would definitely be up, you know, three, four in the morning just writing. But I don't know, I've just lost that schedule. Like, I don't stay up nearly as late anymore. So even as I did in undergrad. So I don't know, something about my schedule is just, it wasn't, you know, convenient for the writing this time. Well, I think you're, you know, the work that you're doing now and the school that you're doing now is a lot more, uh, like, mentally draining, yeah, that's probably you don't, true. You don't really have any classes or anything that you can just skate through. It's like everything you do, you have to concentrate on it, and you have to like put yourself into it more. So. Yeah, and my my TA job evolved this semester into recording an online class with my professor, so that also took up a lot of time, like writing scripts for oh, us gosh. and speaking quizzes and things like that, which is pretty it's pretty fun. But yeah, it did take up more time than expected. Um, but they also paid me more, so there's that. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, it's So it probably just comes down to time management and self-motivation, because uh, our friends Rebecca and Mad, who are also in Backroom Whispering, and I think they did a nanosode as well, mm-hmm. uh, or a mini episode about NaNoWriMo. We're calling those nanosodes. I don't know if the world knows that. I'm sure someone said that. Yeah. Maybe. Um, but if not, now you know. But, like, they have full-time jobs, and they have projects on the outside, too. So they just must have more self-discipline than we do. <laughs> or better time management skills <laughs> or something. Maybe so. I know Rebecca and her fiancé are both writers, so they definitely sit down together and, you know, write. But with my fiancé, I'm just like, oh, let's play video games. Let's watch a TV show. And then my writing time is just kind of gone. Mm. So maybe, like, the environment is a little bit different, and maybe that helps. I don't know. Well, yeah, because I remember in high school and even in college, I would actually go to the library. I would pick myself up and go so that I didn't have all of my hobbies and crafts and musical instruments and whatever around me. I would put myself intentionally in a place where writing and learning and reading was the goal. And I didn't do that this year. Because mm-hmm. my library, my local library, was always closed. <laughs> yeah, and now the library isn't, like, five minutes away. So that was really helpful. Just, you know, the library's right there. I just go there and work. Yeah, but, don't even have yeah. to put on shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the good days. Well, shoes, maybe, but, like... But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to, you know, take off your pajamas. <laughs> um... So yeah, I guess the, these are our, our sort of learn from our mistakes moments here. And I'm sorry if I'm like taking over this whole podcast. I'm just learning so much just talking about it. Um, oh no, it's good because I usually have no idea what to say. So, <laughs> But yeah, so self, self-discipline, self obviously setting the goals for yourself, setting aside the blocks of your schedule, which is also time management. Um, you know, maybe you have to do less of your hobbies or less of your social life or something and then Mm -hmm. being deliberate about it whether it's putting yourself with like talking to people or talking online to people who are also working on it or physically moving yourself to a space where that is your goal because I think a lot of us millennial types we just (laughs) we do all of our stuff in the same space just picking up and going even to like the kitchen table or something might be a way of telling your brain, like, okay, it's writing time, it's time to focus. Yeah, it definitely helps having a space that's, you know, for specifically working or writing or whatever you're up to at that point. It just puts you in the right mindset. Yeah. And then I guess outlining was the other thing. Um, yeah. I think that that would have helped me. Um, just sort of sitting down and thinking about, um, you know, major plot points, because 
I was always just sitting down and thinking like, okay, what's the next word in this sentence? What's a good word to describe this? Yes. And, you know, all that. And then at, at some point I run out of things to describe and I just don't know what's happening next. Yeah, so. I, I honestly think that's what happened to me, too, because I was describing the school, I was describing her friends and, like, her teachers, and she was getting to figure out what this school's about. Freshman year of high school, got to figure out what's going on, but then then what? And mm-hmm. I, I didn't really have a good grasp on that before I started writing, because I didn't start writing until the third day, so it was all just about got to catch up, got to catch up, rather right, than exactly. got to plan for the future. <laughs> Well, now we know. Yeah. Next year we'll do great at outlining. Yeah, we'll a lot, man. <laughs> check back. Hey, uh, listeners, check back on us. <laughs> December sixth, two thousand sixteen. Drop us a line. Tag we can us tell on you Facebook. how again we didn't outline. Hey, man. And, but no, I'm kidding. You speak for yourself, Shelley. <laughs> I'm gonna figure I'm out sure what this crazy team's gonna do. Yeah, you just need to poke all of us and be like, okay, it's October. Time to start outlining. How do you feel about everything? I feel good, honestly. It's not just because I'm recording this and this is going to be listened to by our five listeners. It's <laughs> it's because I made a step. Uh, you know, I had done NaNoWriMo all through high school, a few years of college, and then I just kind of said, oh, I'm too busy. And this year, I said, well, I'm busy, but I can do something. And I did. I did something. So I'm proud of it. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely true. Um, yeah, I really, like, I wouldn't have made time for it unless I was forced to. And then, you know, NaNoWriMo happened, and it made me write a little bit. So I'm happy about that. Um, I don't know if it's going to continue through the year, but at least, you know, next November I have something to start from. And maybe I can plan a little bit more during the year. So, yeah, I feel good, too. <laughs> we didn't win, but we made some progress. <laughs> Where it's a goal. Exactly. We made progress. And that's a good thing. Um, So I guess we get participation medals. No. (laughs) Just kidding. Well, we got some badges on the website, right? For there, for like, um, you know, the first day is worth the work. I thought those were super neat. Yeah. I thought those were really cool. I hadn't seen those before. And this year they let you enter your own goals. So you could, um,. Well, I don't know if you could enter, like, just any goal, but there were some that you could choose if you were going for that. So, yeah, it was kind of fun. All right. Well, I guess we can wrap it up. Um, So check us out on Facebook. I think we're nearing 100 likes. Yes. So so it's very exciting. We might have 100 likes by the time this episode gets posted. You should still like us. You know, our new goal is 200. Yes. (laughs) 3,000. A million. Why not aim high? The Book Table is a podcast from Backroom Whispering Productions. Our theme music is by Mark Wayne. If you like this podcast, rate us on iTunes. Or get in touch with us on Twitter at Backroom Whisper, on Facebook at facebook.com slash backroomwhispering, or by email backroomwhispering at gmail.com. See you next time!